but you're limiting that to the whole neighborhood. Everybody in that neighborhood agrees with these. Whereas here, you're saying, well, as long as Joe Black next door says it's okay, and Susie McHugh back here says it's okay, and Miss Smith over here said it's okay, you're all right. Then somebody moves, somebody comes in, we don't want you to have those chickens. Well, I'd be, mm -hmm. I'd be pretty ticked because I put some money into that coop. But we are setting appropriate expectations with the, the ordinance by saying, look, if somebody does move in, like Tyson said, it's a, this is a privilege, so it can be your, your, your permit is on a yearly basis. Get that person that moves in. I'm not going to like them very much if I built a coop. And I'm, I'm just saying I think there's going to be some problems. Um, I've seen problems before with even boats where you're allowed to park your boat. We've had this whole council chamber fill because we had a specific place for boats and people didn't like it. I can just foresee a lot of problems with people not wanting this chicken ordinance. Mm -hmm. That's just my own opinion. That is, that is, is <coughs> Go ahead, Patty. Uh, first of all, good job. Yeah, good yeah. job. <laughs> um, I'm totally against it, but I herald you for the research that you've done. It's very impressive. Yeah. Um, and and my, my whole ball game is one thing. Our code enforcement guys are swamped Thank already. Thank you. Yeah. Swamped. And I don't think that <coughs> it is fair I don't think it's practical. I don't think it's logical for us to put this burden on them. I have sure. an idea. Um, so when I talk to Edgewood and I talk to independents, they actually do their enforcement of this two different ways. So in Edgewood, the city manager and their codes enforcement officer does it on, um, but then in independence, they actually put it out to PDS so PDS gives a, uh, has a fee for their services, but then it could turn around and... and yeah, let, let me clarify PDS that just attorney. for a minute. Uh, I'm city attorney in Independence, and we actually contract with PDS to do all of our code enforcement oh, okay. work. So it can't so be it's a, one it's, individual it's, thing? No, it's, it's sort of a different situation there. That's so, uh, you know, uh, my grandma had chickens. Chickens are cute. Pigs are cute. Goats are cute. Do I want it next door to me? No, ma'am. I, I just don't think that our city, and, and like Vicki said, there's a lot of real, really, really rural areas in Edgewood. There's a lot of, you know, very interesting and unique places in Covington. You know, I just don't see a place for them in Erlanger. And I think it's ridiculous for us to not, not, I'm not putting you down for what you're trying to accomplish, but it all is going to fall on codes enforcement. And I think it's a ridiculous thing to expect them <coughs> to be monitoring chickens. Do you think that with the amount of restrictions that are in place that an average person would actually go through the lengths and the effort? Or would you be getting a certain group of people that truly care and go out of their way to do something like this? This is a lot to do. It is a lot so to do. So it's not like somebody can just go buy a all, chicken. All I'm saying to you is that it's not gonna fall on us. It's not gonna fall on you. It, it's gonna fall on the codes enforcement. And you know, the next person is going to come in and he's going to want pigs. Well, we had a pig oh. incident this week. Well, it's Why'd she point to me? <laughs> no, 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 not you. <laughs> you you're the bee man. I'm just kidding. I'm you're just not kidding. the pee man. <laughs> but, I, you know, it, it's no. I say no. I vote no. I'm sorry. But I do herald you for your opportunity to speak. Go ahead, Go Green. Ahead. Oh, Green. no, I was pointing to him. Huh? A question to you. Oh, I'm just, Patty was, uh, said what I was going to say. These guys are so busy. How many part-time guys did we hire? Three. One, two. Well, two. we've only got two part-time. Right? Two part-time, one two full-time. Full oh, yeah. One can't keep up with what we're doing now. Right. With the yards, the grass, the run-down rental properties. 
For me, I, I'm, I'm not for it. That's just too much to put on these guys to, uh, to do it. Green has a question. Okay. I, I also want to commend you on all the work you've done. And um, I'm, I'm still on the fence on this because I, I look at both sides and I see everybody's going organic and everybody's wanting to do their own farming. And I know we're a city, and I, I do agree with Jessica that hardly anybody is going to do this because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, you know, I, and I don't know if I'll, I'll vote for it or not if it goes to the, you know, if it goes to an ordinance. But um, if it goes to an ordinance, I think it should be limited at four chickens, not six. I think six is too many. Um, and also you should add no for the commercial part, no selling for slaughtering either. And um, I agree with Vicki on the neighbor issues. I worry that it's going to cause problems with neighbor, you know, neighbors oh, it will. getting yeah. upset with it each will. other when There's one no doesn't doubt. want it. But um, most of all, I would like to know if Daryl would like to add anything to it. Not putting you on the spot, but this is, but this is what you guys do, and you know, and we really want to hear from you. You're on the spot. Swiftly the spot. moving to the podium. Um, I, I, I see. Been anxious to talk about. This. I see a couple of issues with the ordinance that you've outlined. Um, for several years, we've had a pit bull registration ordinance. It's free. They have to have the dog's rabies shots, which everyone should do. Microchip the dog. Make sure they have a fence around their property. Have property owner insurance, fill out a registration form, <coughs> boom, they're registered. That's it. We've been doing this now for six years. No one in this city has willingly called me to register their pit bull. Hmm. All the pit bulls that we have registered are because of neighbor complaints. The dogs have been hidden, kept away from, so no one can see them. Uh, usually what happens is they get out of the house or they chase somebody, and that's how we find out about it. And that's what's happening with a free registration program, um, a program that you're going to charge someone $25 with the knowledge that after I put all of this money into my chickens, a coop, uh, veterinary expenditures and everything else, that this guy from the city can come up and say, nope, they're gone, you failed, or, or a neighbor moves in and says, I don't want chickens next door to me, so <coughs> thousands of dollars you've spent they're going to, just like the chickens that we have found over the years, it's going to be because we're either inspecting another property and we look over and there they are, or um, a neighbor gets upset, calls up and says, yeah, they've had chickens for months. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to be that neighbor, that that's what's going to happen. They're going to hide the chickens from us other than pay or other than get rid of I don't know how much these birds cost a piece or how much the, the coop you explained they're going to have to have is going to cost them. Um, I just don't see someone right off the bat saying, well, my new neighbor said I can't have it, so I'm going to scrap it all today, or the codes guy said it didn't pass an inspection, so I'm going to scrap it all. I, I, I don't see that happen. Um, it, it's just like I said, with the, with the pit bull issue, doing it six or seven years for free and people are still sneaking them into the city or um, I'll get a phone call saying I'm, I've moved into the city and I have a pit. Do you guys have a registration process? Yes, where do you live? Click. Man, I, I honestly think that's what you're going to get with, with the chickens. Um, I think one of the other council, uh, council persons said something about, about pigs and goats. I've already had to turn away service, service <laughs> pigs, I guess that's what they are, which I, which I didn't know, did, you know, uh, service pigs, um, other various animals. I, I do foresee when we start allowing them, it's going to be, well, I have a, a note from my doctor, I need to have this pig. Why, my neighbor has a chicken, why can't I have a pig? Pigs stay in the house, they're quiet, no one will see it. it, it it's going to escalate. Um, if council decides that that's what they want to do, I'll do it. I, I don't have a problem with that. That's my job. Um, we don't have the skills to determine if a, if a chicken is healthy, if it's sick, if the
person who has the chicken and knows it's sick is going to tell me the truth. Um, it, it, there's a, a lot of variables that are going to go into it that are going to, that are going to increase our workload as far as inspections. Um, when we inspect, do I do I call them up and say, "Hey, I'm coming to your house tomorrow to inspect your to make sure you uh, are you're in compliance." And they say, oh my gosh, I've got nine chickens. I'm only allowed to have five. Let me hide four in the basement. And when I get there, there's five chickens. Hey, you pass, and they bring the four back up. You know, it, or do I make surprise inspections? It's there's a lot of issues in there to look at as far as that aspect goes. Um, if, if if you guys can make it work, our office is prepared to do it. I'm just pointing out some of the issues you are going to run into. There are going to be people who are going to skirt this ordinance. So. Mr. Eisler. Okay. We've only had this one instance. And I've been in Erlanger for years, and I've been in other cities. I have not seen this problem. We only got one person, and this city ought to be friendly to people that wants to live here. And if a chicken, she's had those chickens over there, I think, for a few years. No one's ever complained. I didn't even know they was there. And I've got property around there. And if you're going to get it to where there's so many restrictions on our city, who in the world wants to come here? I don't. This is a city that for people that wants to enjoy life, and the chicken's not going to hurt nothing. I'd rather have chicken next door to me than I had with people with snakes and these dogs that barks all the time than I had these chickens. I think, I think we're making a, a, mole, a mountain out of a molehill. And we got restrictions here. And if somebody don't like it, all the only thing they have to do is come and say no. Let's be a friendly city for people. And I don't see what how to go through all of this just for somebody to have a chicken to lay an egg. That's not a commercial. Not not to interrupt, but um, this is not the only instance. Last year alone, I had to remove uh, from eight separate residences chickens. Yeah. In early? Yes. One of, which, one of which had a rooster that the neighbor didn't want to complain about because he didn't want retaliation from the guy who owned the chickens. No roosters in this, though. No roosters. This is just chickens. I understand that. But what I'm saying is people do bring them in. They're, 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 they're in the city now. There are probably chickens in this city now that we're not even aware of. But we've got the rules here that you've got to have the coops. And I've personally seen this lady over there, and she, it's her pets. It's her life. They don't hurt a thing. She's got the backyard clean, everything reserved. And I think she's even got names for these chickens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I don't see where it's a, a big deal myself. Can, can I interject <clears throat> here? Um, Ma'am, I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot your name. So I'm, I'm, please forgive me for that. Isaac? All right, Miss Isaac. Um, Miss Isaac was cited for having the, the, the chickens at her house. Uh, during that hearing, and I was the hearing officer at the time, um, I asked Miss Isaac whether or not she knew that these chickens were prohibited in the city of Erlinger when she got those chickens. Her answer was yes. So back to Officer Jewett's point, people are not going to do that before. If you, if you know that, and I think you're a great owner, and I think that you're probably taking care of them better than almost anybody else would, but still, the fact is, they were prohibited, and that didn't stop anybody from getting them. That, that was my point. So if we think that people are going to come and, and do this, probably not. I, I, I agree with Officer Jewett. You know, we had a, uh, the, the pig incident this week. You know, my concern is looking at this and looking at the resources that we have. Where does it stop? So now if we're saying that 500 feet, which is for agriculture, farming, doing those kind of things, <coughs> having livestock, if that ordinance isn't any good anymore and we want to reduce that, what do we reduce it to? And then you can't only limit it to chickens. You're going to have to open it up because there's going to be somebody else sitting in here wanting goats. There's going to be somebody else sitting in here wanting pigs. Because we had, it happened this week. I was shocked with the pigs this week. 
Um, and it got loose is the only reason that we knew that the person had the pig. Um, and it was in a, a pretty newer neighborhood, which my, was, my, was my first year in codes. Yeah. I encountered a woman who was hiding a goat in a shed on Jacqueline. Yeah. So, so, so these kind of things are happening. So what do we open up? That's what we have to look at, I think, for the future and see where we're at and what we're going to enforce and, and how we're going to do it. Um, I agree. Everybody ought to be able to enjoy their property and, and do all that. Um, and if you don't think neighbors aren't going to pull it away when they get mad about something else, oh. you're wrong. We get calls every day because one neighbor's mad at another neighbor because they did something and now I'm going to complain or I got cited for this. Well, what about that? Um, it's a tit for tat thing every day that these guys go through. Oh, you can't believe through. the neighbors yeah. I've got. You got some bad ones, I know. <laughs> across the street. The worst street. ones are across the street. But to your point, if there's a rule on the books and there are people that don't follow rules, they're going to follow, they're going to not follow a rule whether or not we have a rule. That's probably true. So if we put something in place, then we have the means to do it the proper, correct way. And if they don't follow the rules, then they, you know, and they get found out in the same way, then they're still at the same end product. They still have to get rid of them because they didn't follow, you know, you know what I mean? But you're saying that there might be someone who would be willing to go ahead and, uh, so, so they, they maybe they didn't realize they weren't supposed to have them. Yeah. They're made aware that they, there's certain a certain process they have to go through. They go through the process. They meet all the requirements. All the all the neighbors are happy, and then they're allowed to have them legally, at least for a year. Yeah. That's the way the pit bull one works, right? Uh, that's exactly the way the pit bull one works. No one adheres to it. So I, I would suggest, it, please, if, if, if you are considering moving forward something like this, obviously we've only had one person and maybe two come in here and, and request this. There's about 18,500 people that live in this city. Uh, you know, we went to some extreme uh, links and are still going through those about perimeter drive and those kind of things. Uh, that particularly, that was one neighborhood. It's not the whole city. Um, I, please have a plan or, or, or instruct me or how to do that to get more public input into this. If you're going to make this decision to change it for the whole city, we need to make this public. I'll go back to Edgewood, and I don't want to mention any names, but um, I'm sure one of the people you talk to is one of our residents. And that person told me, yes, uh, we do have this ordinance, and I wish we didn't have it, and I live in Erlanger, and I sure don't want Erlanger to have it. And the main reason was after they passed it and they didn't do enough advertising and letting people know, they had people coming to city council meetings complaining about the chickens in the city, not even knowing that the city council had passed the chicken ordinance. So I just please caution you against that to make sure we publicize it enough so everybody knows what, what we're doing. Andy. Yeah, I was just thinking that the people might violate the rule if we adopt it. I don't think there's enough reason not to adopt it. I mean, we have a rule that says you're supposed to stop at stop signs, and people don't do it, but we're not going to repeal that rule. Um, so I don't think that's a very good reason. I, I, I do have concern about, and we're hearing from a very small number of people about this, and I do think we would want to advertise this, put it on our website, that we're considering it, and get a lot more input, because the people we're hearing from are vocally in favor of it, and that's fine. That's what I would expect since they're trying to get the change. But I would like to hear how other people feel about this. Uh, I've heard very mixed reports from the people I've talked to, some people being you know, totally in favor of it and a lot of people being totally against it. And, and I, I, I have real mixed feelings about this. I mean, one part that bothers me about this is the thing about adjacent property, uh, adj adjacent neighbors. You know, first off, you know, who's a neighbor? Is that the property owner or the property resident? We need to figure that out. You know, if it's a rental property, is the tenant get the thing, get the consent, or does the uh, property owner? And secondly, you know, I do see a difference between this and the homeowners association issue because with the homeowners association, and I'm sure they all pretty much restrict these things, um, it protects a whole neighborhood. Whereas with this, if we're just doing with adjacent property owners, you know, you, my, the person on my left and my right might consent, but the guy across the street may be totally opposed to it, but he will have no voice in this. And so I think that could be problematic as well. So I, I think I need, to, I need to sort through those kind of issues and see how... I, I'd really like to get a lot more input from the city on how, how they're looking at this. Go ahead, Renee. I just had a comment. I'm trying to figure out why we're trying to draw up an ordinance with so many restrictions and um, hurdles to jump through 
so that nobody will actually bring chickens into the city. If we're going through all that, why don't we just not do it at all? It's like a giddy up low. Yeah, we're going to do it, but we're going to hold you back. So why are we spending all this time to make an ordinance that's going to keep the chickens out like I'm going to get like a miniature pony. You're going to get a miniature pony? Yep. <laughs> I just don't see the logic of <clears throat> even going through the hassle of making the ordinance. Yeah, I mean, I I certainly can't speak to um, for Jessica and, and Mrs. Isaac, but, you know, I believe uh, the, a lot of this has been drafted, you know, looking at the other cities, but then also talking uh, with Mrs. Isaac and and maybe other chicken owners, and they had said, "I mean, am I am I putting words in your mouth that they would be able to follow these rules?" Yeah, I mean, these are these are pretty standard rules from looking at cities across the country. These are pretty standard standard rules. So I don't know. I mean, I think the 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 biggest thing here that hasn't been done in Kentucky is the adjacent neighbor consent form. And I got that idea from Ms. Isaac, and then I started doing research about it, and it's done in other states. There's some in Colorado. I have some sample adjacent neighbor consent forms if you guys are interested to see it. Um, so it's done in Colorado. There's some in Minnesota, some in Maine. So it was just an idea, a way to find a compromise for the people that don't want chickens and then to accommodate the people that do. If they have the ability, if their neighbors are fine with it, this provides them the opportunity to live the way they want to live and have the chickens. So I was really trying to find a, a balance. Mm -hmm. Do the other right. states that have the adjacent form, do they go to the owner of the property or the resident? The property, the property owner. The property owner? Mm -hmm. It says in the in the documentation, property owner. Finding them. We can't even find them in our language. I know, that's what oh, I was just going to say. Bad. Good luck finding them. Oh, I can't. have another comment, and I, I also applaud Jessica. You did a fantastic job. I had looked up some of this stuff. I left my stuff at home. Um, but um, here's the other problem. Um, when, you, when you get permission um, from these property owners, um, let's say, yeah, they, they all agree, and then you decide you're going to sell your house. Yeah, it's not, only, not only are the, are, is this person who owns the chickens going to get somebody in there that might not like the chickens, I may have a hard time selling my house because of that. We had some residents here a while back that didn't want a uh, funeral home on the corner of a neighborhood saying that their property values would go down, and we respected that. And my thought is, too, that if I'm driving through a neighborhood, I see chicken coops. <coughs> I personally do not want to move into that residential area. Like I said, I, I love chickens. I had rabbits, chickens, ducks, a horse, and everything. But I also had a farm, and that's what that's intended for. It's not intended for residential. I like to sit out on my back deck in the summer. Our houses are close enough together that if there were chickens anywhere around, my dog would bark. Now I'm in trouble because my dog is violating the ordinance of barking at these chickens. And I, I just no, can't word. understand, you know, why we would want to, like, like everybody said, I don't understand why we want to put ourselves through this torture. And um, I, I just foresee it turning neighbors against neighbors. Mm -hmm. I really do. And, and in my neighborhood, my neighbors are afraid to complain about anything. They come to me because I'm on council. Well, I call the city building council. I don't want to complain. They'll think I'm a troublemaker. And so that, that's the point. I mean, you know, if I'm old enough that I'm going to complain, then I'm going to be the bad guy. And I just, I hate to see neighbors against neighbors. I like to have a nice, friendly little residential area. And as someone mentioned, too, what about the person across the street? You know, and you've got chickens in your backyard. They may not like it, but doesn't matter because they're not part of this. So would you be for it if the adjacent neighbor consent form was yanked? And it was just a... No, because that's a protection. That, but what I'm that's saying why I put is it in there. it's going <laughs> to cause problems because if, then if you don't have that and my dog gets out there and there's these chickens, 
I'm going to be in trouble for her barking. You know? I can't keep her in 24-7. She's got to be out at some time. I try to keep her in when the mailman comes because she barks at the mailman. Um, we've not had any complaints about our dog barking because I do keep her in when I know there's something you know, happening outside. So what I'm saying is if there's chickens next door, they're going to be there all the time. Now I'm not going to be able to keep this dog because I'm going to be in violation of the uh, nuisance ordinance for a barking dog. And then the other thing is, too, you got to make sure they don't get loose because they can get loose. And if it gets loose, anybody that has dogs on adjacent property, they will, they will attack them. They'll think it's a chew toy. They may not do it viciously, but right, when you've got a dead chicken, now this neighbor's mad at you because your dog attacked their chicken and... Just, I just think it's a lot of problems. And in my neighborhood, I did do some canvassing, and um, nobody, they, they laughed at me. They said, you're actually concerned about <coughs> canvassing. Well, I'm not, but the council is. So, I, I think Mark's got a good idea about getting more input from, That's part of the best you know, the 18,000 citizens that we have. Oh, I just want to put it to bed. Well, you never know what people are going to say. Yeah, I mean, obviously, a other cities around us have done this already, and it's... You know why Edgewood did it? For a 4-H yeah. program. No, I, I read that there was somebody that had the chickens, and they went, after they had the chickens, somebody complained about them, and they went to Edgewood, and Edgewood had not put any legislation in, in, um, in their books. <coughs> so now they've got people that have chickens all over with no legislation, and so they had to make legislation. I, found that online. I think we could probably talk about this and debate on it all night. Um, no doubt. Jack had a marvelous idea, I thought. Um, oh, yeah, Jack. Thank you. What if, what if we put a, um, you know, put together some type of survey monkey type survey for the website and try to get people's responses? Maybe we can put this, this um, proposal, you know, maybe put a little bit more teeth in this and put that on there for people to look at and kind of get people to weigh in on what they think. What, what would you think about that? Anybody a good idea. A lot of people don't get on the website, especially older people. And well, if you put it on well, Facebook, we'll advertise it on too. Facebook. A lot of people don't get on the website. And then even the thing with perimeter, there were so many people that did not fill that out and return it, you know? And right, it was like, yeah. We're never going to get everybody to respond. I can go door to door, but I'm, I just don't, I'm too old for that. I can't go door to door. <laughs> Sorry. We can try to get the word out and. Yeah, put on, share it on Facebook on all the different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't have any gauge of what people think. No, I just yeah. hate to pit the neighbors against each other. That's my biggest. Yeah, subject. I understand that. I agree. People I've talked to are about half and I half. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. yeah. Because you know, the whole thing is people are just going organic. I mean, that's yeah. it's kind of a trend. And, and you know, Kentucky's always 10 years behind everybody else. So. You know, Tulis is right down the street. Yeah, right. You know, and that's, it, that is a good point, too, Corrine. Um, like, my neighbors don't have any say at all. Right. I mean, it's, we've, it's not even a thought that crosses their minds because we're, nobody, we all know that we're not allowed to have it. So. And personally... <coughs> I would never want a homeowners association, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's a okay, so. Um, I don't know about you. Yeah. What do you think about that? Should we tr maybe try a survey and see? Put something on the website can't. and see it what It can't hurt. Yeah. I mean, it can't hurt. We've, we've done it before. We, you know, we had Just the. Just talking. Right. So. The trash. We've had the other stuff that doing that. I think it's it's worth at least to get a little bit of input. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. I think it needs to be worded very carefully, that this is purely an idea. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we just have to make sure that people don't freak out. Yeah. yeah. Like the perimeter situation, that needed, that ex <clears throat> those expectations needed to be set, that this is just an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica, we, I, want, I, we I, wanted to boost attendance anyway, so this will be a good idea. <laughs> I <didn't laughs> Here's a good one when we get people dressed like chickens. Jessica, anyway. that's an excellent I point, and I don't think I would put in your, your whole dissertation. Yeah. I just throw it out there. Bullet, bullet points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just throw it out there. <coughs> so, would you consider, would, would, you know, would you consider 
having chicken next door to you. If your neighbor wants them, I roast them. Uh -huh. I think I think it's interesting because I I went a step further and I, I went to Anne's house. I wanted to I wanted to get a full picture. I wanted to truly understand the situation. Um, so I went there and I smelled. I wanted to understand it. it does it smell? Is it loud? And a lot of my concerns were dissipated. Mm -hmm. So I I just it, I think it's a lot of fear of the unknown. I, you know, I, it, it's going to be, it's going to open a can of worms. I, I can promise you that. <clears throat> All right, let's, I, yeah, like I said, we can continue talking about it. Let's, let's move on this evening. I, I'm still fighting for an idea, the chance of getting pizza from Frank one of these nights. That ain't gonna happen. That ain't gonna happen. Um, okay, I'm gonna move on to the next item then. Under administration, the, the Lions Club property annexation, Mr. Gatlin. Yeah, Dave, do you wanna say anything about this or do you want me to just go through it short and sweet? All right, we were approached by the Lions Club to annex in their property. They are currently in unincorporated Boone County. Right, I knew that. Okay, so there's a couple things that are kind of interesting about this. Number one is they pay absolutely no taxes, so, so there's no financial reason it's purely on its face that the city would do this. But what I think is really intriguing about this is everybody has agreed to it. So Boone County is comfortable with it. The Lions Club wants to do it, so it would be a consensual annexation. And it would create an opportunity uh, for us to kind of plant that flag proverbially, pr proverbally, proverbally in, <laughs> into uh, Boone County. And I know when you look at the map, and I know that, the, that uh, Mark, the mayor, and Dave and I have looked at that map, there, there could be some other opportunities in Boone County that could be um, more significant to Erlanger in the future. So again, I wanted to bring it up to everyone's attention. We've, there have been a lot of emails. There's a few uh, logistical issues that we would have to do with that property. Obviously, that property, since it is in Boone County, would be subject to Boone County uh, Planning Commission, Boone County Planning and Zoning, Boone County Rules. There's a few things with the ordinance we'd have to do with that. But for all practical purposes, and I've looked at all of the deeds, there's significant deed restrictions on those, that property. You know, it's been a Lions Club for a long time. Um, all that we would need to do to annex it into the city is to instruct uh, Mr. Viox to go ahead and prepare that survey. Um, and then uh, we would pass a first and second reading. So. It's always we, been Erlanger Lions. I know. Mm -hmm. Which is why I think they want to be in Erlanger. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so everybody okay with it? Oh, I, yeah. okay. did, you, did you talk to Chief? How do you feel about that, Tony? Yeah, I mean, and, and policing it. Because I know there was a real issue there. We already serve it. Between Boone County and, and you guys. Really? I mean, we were up there anyway. If they need us, we're there. And likewise, so. Yeah. Same with EMS. You don't think it would be? Okay, well, that's great then. I do have one question. I know, I know this came up when we had the discussions with Boone County. Um, for some reason, they believe that we have to uh, join their planning commission. I don't know if that ever got mm. worked yeah, we, out. Yeah, we not. talked about that. We don't have to, that property will be subject to their commission. That's all. Okay. We don't have to join it in order for that to be. That parcel of property in the city of Erlanger needs to join the commission as it relates to that property, but there's no active thing that we need to do. Okay. That sounds good. That's right. great. Great. Can I ask a question? And it's probably addressed to Jim more than anybody else, but the city owns some acreage in Boone County, not near this property, but right. down uh, Hartman Road in that area. What would you think about including that in the annexation? We would be annexing two parcels. I don't see any reason why we can't do it. Where's the other parcel? City owns land in, in Boone line. County. In Boone County. Down behind Some Cherry acreage Hill and by Cherry, Cherry Hill. Hill. Down, somewhere around Cherry Hill. It's gifted to us. It's adjacent? Go ahead. No. We own it. Adjacent to the city. It's adjacent. It's not adjacent to this oh. particular piece of property, no. All right. It's not adjacent to the other piece of property, but it's adjacent to the city. Should we treat it separately? Yeah, it'd be separate. You could do both in one one ordinance. Is all I'm saying. 
if you want to do it. I don't know if it's yeah. The only difference being is we have not, not specifically spoken with Boone <laughs> County about that. I think we at least would want to uh, have those conversations. Put the, yeah, I wouldn't want them to think that we're just talking about property that has deed restrictions that the Lions Club, and now all of a sudden we're taking property that has economic potential economic value. But we certainly can do that, and we can have that ready for the first reading. That's easy. They've been very accommodating. Okay, do you want me to reach out to them? Do the Lions Club then look at the next time look at this property? Hill, I, I, I agree with Frank. If, if we want to do it all in one, that certainly would save, that would save advertising time. That wouldn't save any engineering time, I don't think. Well, it's both going to have to be engineered anyway. I mean, right. So right. If everybody's good with it, why not get them both? But the property that Mr. Whitman is describing is continuous to some potential development. Right, which is where it's at. Okay, I'll reach out to Boone County and That's why I think they ask them if they have any problem with us doing that. I'll contact them this week and let you all know. All right, any other discussion? Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Then we'll move on to the last item on the agenda is, the, is my discussion. So I've got a, a brief presentation. I'm going to go up to the podium. You're the podium. You know you only got three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I've got, yeah, the, timer my, I've got the timer in my. I've got the timer in my pocket. That was great. Take your time. <laughs> Everybody else. Has. All right. So um, the goals for the upcoming year. Um, so several times I've heard the the reference to the mayor's agenda, and. Um, what I've put together is is a plan for the city, um, but it, you know, ultimately though, it's about one of the hallmarks of what makes our country exceptional, um, e pluribus unum, and um, not to put Randy on the spot, but I think you you know what that means, right? What is out of many one? Out of many one, yeah. So we've uh, we've assembled the the concerns and and issues. Yeah, good job. Latin paid off, right? Or law school paid off. Well, You're Latin too. <laughs> um, so, um, trying to assemble some of the things we've heard from the community, the staff, city council, to develop some goals for the next year. The amazing thing about this is that um, we've had input from a lot of people, and there's a lot of great ideas, and there's a lot of different ideas. And that's what I think, as you, as you see this, you're going to find that there's a lot of things that you agree with. Um, and, uh, and they're all different ideas. So anyhow, in a nutshell, we're looking at prosperity across the city. My plan would be to present this again at our February council meeting, now that once you guys have had a chance to see it and, and give any other input on this. So... Um, this thing is a little bit touchy. I might ask mm. Sherry to do the same. Should, I'll do like that. <laughs> no. Okay, so um, some of my budget goals, um, you know, balancing the budget for the city. Also, uh, continuing to reduce the real and tangible property taxes. We've done a great job with that the last two years, and continuing that, um, that trend uh, would be a huge benefit, I believe. And to cut, try to cut the spending of each department. This has been a, this isn't a new thing either. This is something that we've done the last two years, um, trying to cut, cut the budgets, just to try to find efficiencies, um, of about one percent per department per year. Okay, Sherry. So the goal is to benefit the employees. You know, we, the goal would be wanting to keep happy, productive, long-term employees. Um, so these two items here kind of go in conjunction with the new health insurance plan that we're planning on rolling out. So going to a self-insured plan, uh, it would behoove the city, it's gonna, and it's going to help the, the employees to come up with a wellness plan for the employees. And then along with that, kind of in conjunction with that, as a self-insured plan, the city allocates so much money per employee per year 
And if we can stay underneath what the actual health insurance costs are per employee, um, developing a, basically a savings sharing plan. So if we come come in under target or under <coughs> under you know where we expect to be, we distribute that money out to the participants in the plan, and they're also promoting wellness um, and wanting people to. Um, no, not, not trying to discourage people from using the plan, but um, trying to promote, um, I don't know, I guess you could say healthy, healthy living, but, you know, by, by having a sharing plan, um, I'm probably not describing that very well, but let's move on to the next. Okay, goals to benefit the residents. Um, we want to effectively, efficiently de deliver our city services. Um, thinking about solutions. I mean, a lot of like what we're doing tonight here, um, figuring out how we can say yes. You know, what would it, instead of saying no, uh, it's easy to say no, but what does it take to say yes? And um, that doesn't solve everything, uh, and it doesn't make everybody happy, but, um, um, you know, sometimes still the reason why, or what, what someone has to do in order to be able to say yes, um, doesn't justify it, but that at least gives people a better feeling when they know what they would have to do in order to be able to, for the city to agree to anything. We want to promote single family ownership and we want to help taxpayers raise their property values. So kind of a rhetorical question there, you know, how can we interest more of our employees to live inside the city for a Let's move on to the next slide. Goals to benefit the businesses. We want businesses to call Erlanger home for the location, the labor pool, the amenities, and the value. Um, having a business spotlight on our website, we're doing it here in our meetings. We've started that recently, and um, that's been a, a, I think that's been a great success. I think the businesses really appreciate the recognition, and it's also a great way for us to get to know the people who are part of our city. Um, business listings on our, our link, or links on our website. So this is huge. This doesn't seem like a really big deal for us, but having the businesses listed and that they can go on our website and click a link that's going to take them to Bluegrass Quality Meats or um, Willow Ridge Plastics, you know, things like that. I've learned that there is, a, in the analytics of Google, there is a huge benefit for any of those companies if they have that link from a municipal organization or a municipal site, they get bumped up tremendously on Google searches. Okay, so that's really gonna help our people a ton by having those kind of links. I see a few of you nodding your heads. And then also increasing the opportunities for them to contribute to the community. You know, getting more people involved. We talked with, Dave and I talked with, um, Bluegrass Quality Meats. This summer, they want to be involved in all of the, the, the get-togethers that we have and, the, and the, the, the events that we're doing, and they want, to, they want to provide free, you know, brats and mets and hot dogs and stuff at all those events, which is, I mean, that's just huge. And, you know, it gives them a chance to show off what they're proud of doing right here in our city. Okay, the goal is to use our position to serve our community. So continuing to find efficiencies in our services, uh, fire, EMS, police, dispatch, and public works. Continuing to make our utilities and the maintenance of those utilities affordable for everyone. And working with our legislator, legislature and the neighboring communities to thwart the drug ep epidemic. So some of the things I heard from, from you guys, um, increasing the council involvement in the county and regional meetings, um, the Northern Kentucky Area Development District, um, the health department, uh, Tom Cahill is, is, um, has already attended a health department meeting. Um, I would love it if you, know, if you guys would consider um, attending these meetings and um, 
even be the, um, you know, the alternate or the designee for the city. Um, the Northern Kentucky Area Development District, I know Patty would, would love those meetings. I, you know, I, I'm trying to convince her to, to join me in some of those. Uh, PDS, I know uh, Randy um, attends those meetings occasionally. Um, the Kenton County Planning Commission, I know Mrs. Fetty had mentioned she would be interested in that. The Erlanger Ellesmere School District, I would hope that I could talk um, Mrs. Kyle with her teaching experience to, um, to attend some of those meetings. So um, also, welcoming new businesses, large and small, as Mrs. Kyle said that. Uh, listening to the concerns and make decisions that benefit a majority of the citizens, Mrs. Kyle again. Uh, increasing the transparency between the, the city and the citizens. Mrs. Fetty said that. I think that, you, were you referring to the financial uh, transparency or just transparency overall? Transparency overall, trying to get the community involved. Okay. Try to boost attendance and. Okay, sorry for putting you on the spot. Okay. You didn't know I was gonna mention that. Um, coming to a resolution about the chicken situation. Right? We're talking about that this evening. Um, Develop a master street maintenance plan. Mr. Cahill had said that. I think that's a great idea. A tax in incentive plan for new and expanding businesses. Again, Mr. K Mr. Cahill, thank you. Uh, create a senior center with grant money. Uh, both Mrs. Kyle, or Mrs. Cahill, excuse me, and Mrs. Sedkamp had mentioned that. Uh, police, fire, roads, and park. I think Mr. Burke's saying that all these things are important and that we need to be paying attention to all those. Don't let me put words in your mouth, Mr. Burke. If I'm, correct, sir. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Long-term financial stability. Mr. Montgomery had said that. I think that's fantastic. Um, I appreciate that. Make sure the police, fire, EMS, and public works have the resources they need. Uh, both Mr. Montgomery and Mrs. Pitts had said that. Thank you. Um, I know Mrs. Uh, Sudkamp had mentioned with the tax decreases, explain the services that will be cut and inform the people of who, who will be losing their jobs. And I, I think you know, what we're seeing already happening and what will continue to happen is that we won't be cutting any jobs and we won't be cutting any services. Um, we are cutting the tax rate, um, but that our revenue will still continue to, to increase over time. Uh, merging with Ellesmere's fire district. Mrs. Sedkamp had mentioned that as well. And fantastic idea. And, it, you know, it, it is um, very possible for us. And I know the chief has been, has been talking, uh, not, I don't know if necessarily with Ellesmere, but he has been talking with some of the other fire districts and, um, you know, where it would make sense for us to, to uh, join. And Ellesmere is a, a prime example of where it would really make sense for us to join our forces. Reduce the city's dependence on the railroad contracts. Mr. Nicely had mentioned that. And I think there he was primarily saying, you know, right now we've got contracts um, with the uh, railroad for um, the building where our public works is housed, um, our train depot park, um, the old station number two is there on railroad property. and. You know, it, sometimes it's kind of hard for us to, to use a hammer with the railroad when they hold those contracts. Uh, we we kind of have one of those big blow-up festival hammers. Um, you know, really, we don't have a whole lot of weight that we carry with them sometimes. Mr. Gatlin would probably argue that we don't have a whole lot of weight to carry with the railroads, period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> And then also, Mr. Nicely had said, work on the county, work with the county and state to fix this, fix Stevenson Road. And yeah, Stevenson Road has a has a host of issues, um, from stormwater drainage to um, uh, visibility, and um, yeah, and the geometry of the street. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's go on to the next um, other goals from the staff. Um, Mr. Bodie is working on ado adopting new financial policies. So um, I'm, I'm probably gonna get the dates wrong on this, but I believe our, the last time that those were officially rolled out was like 1974, is that right, somewhere? Or was it earlier than that? Okay. Oh, what a smart hour. 
Yeah. <laughs> I could have said 1985, and you probably would have said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's been a while. And I think we've, we've made efforts over time to, um, to address it. It, it is a, it, it's a monumental task, because it's a huge, um, a huge document. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that Mr. Bodie has that on his radar to, um, to adopt new financial policies this year. Mr. Bogard had mentioned he'd like to add staff to Public Works. And if you remember, um, not in this um, fiscal year, but last fiscal year, there was actually money that was allocated uh, to add um, administrative help to um, Public Works. And Mr. Bogard had never filled that position. So, um, and I think he's thinking other staff as well. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Um, Mr. Bogard, Mr. Bogard had also said develop a long-range plan for building maintenance. There again, I think that kind of goes along with, with, with what Mr. Cahill said, and, and I think this, uh, the report that we're, get, that we're generating right now is going to help us tremendously in moving in that direction. So that's great as well. Um, Mr. Uh, Chief Wilson had said become fully staffed and increase training. Um, and he had also mentioned that um, perhaps we have Erlanger host some of these regional trainings. There's 8,000 policemen that are policemen and women who are looking to get trained uh, or extend their training this year uh, statewide. So and we, we, Erlanger is not like most cities in the state. I mean, a lot of them don't have the, the type of facilities that we have, and we certainly should be using that to our benefit. And as I think we all know, the more people that come here and the more people that see Erlanger, the more people like Erlanger. Yeah, we don't have a facility in Erlanger. Well, we've got this. This is a whole lot more than what a lot of other people, was that what you were thinking or not? I'd like to see 8,000 people in here. Oh, it's not 8,000 all at once. <laughs> <laughs> this facility and what? Okay, yeah, okay. Adding others in the future. Yeah, right, I, I think, um, off, Greg Ayler had made a point to try to get finished with all of his training this evening before we got started. They're doing the FATS training in there right now, the firearms training simulator. <coughs> And uh, so we weren't hearing the gunfire and stuff like that, but it is a phenomenal. I, I, I peeked in there a little bit before the meeting, and you know, if you haven't looked at that, and some of, oh, some of the new council members, that. they had to we see it. Oh, yeah, we've yeah. all done that. Yeah, yeah. yeah we did that a couple of years ago. Yeah. We did it yeah. when we were It's awesome. It, is, it really yeah. is. It's yeah, incredible. Um, okay, moving on then. Uh, Chief Whitaker had said uh, creating a pathway to success, and he's been talking about this for a number of years. You know, basically being able to to hire a new fire um, uh, firefighter or EMS, um, and being able to kind of lay out where they can expect to be as time goes on. You know, fulfilling the training requirements and fulfilling continuing education and things like this where they could expect to be. And I think that's a phenomenal idea. Um, he also said that he would like to increase the activity in the schools. You know, having the the, the firemen mo more present at lunch times and things like that. And I think we, we all should make that a goal, uh, including myself. Um, Mr. Allen had said that he would like to do, or one of his goals was to get new cameras and audio in the, in, right here in the council chambers. As you may or may not be aware, I think there's one or maybe two of these cameras that actually work. And um, you know, it's time, it's time to, to repair them or replace them. Also rolling out a new website. <clears throat> uh, the plan is that there actually is a, um, um, a preliminary website that's been put together. And uh, the web hosting is a fraction of the cost of what we were paying before. And that's expected to be rolled out on July 1st. So I commend Mr. Allen for that. Uh, Mr. Allen and Mr. Christopher Field said, um, you know, finalizing the work that we did on the city logo, branding the city. Um, you know, again, still kind of, I think we've all, what I've heard generally from council is that you know, the, the image that we have right now is, is great. Um, I think, you know. Classy. 
It is. And, um, you know, I think the, 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 the police badge, or I mean the police um, patch, it, it, it incorporates that into their patch. And I think that's what I'm kind of thinking, that we would do that, that same kind of thing citywide, that public works would incorporate that image into theirs and, and fire would as well, uh, as well as uh, the admin, their general government. So, um, you know, making it look like we're all on the same team. Uh, Mrs. Hoffman had mentioned reevaluating re our passport program. You know, depending on how the real ID uh, legislation goes, um, potentially we could um, we could get swamped with how many people need um, passports. <coughs> so we're going to have to pay attention to that legislation and um, and be ready to to, to react. <clears throat> She had also mentioned compliance review of the internal procedures, and I think there that's just kind of making sure that we are um, uh, staying legal and, and, and following the rules. And then I added this one, you know, because I knew that the uh, audit had mentioned reconciling the gas card purchases as one of their recommendations, and I thought that would be a good thing that we go ahead and work on that as well. Okay, so let's roll on to the next and final slide. Um, Okay, so what's the next step? Review the list and think about it. You know, I think we can all agree that these are all good, everything here is a good idea. Um, where do we want to help? What, what are we willing to help with? Um, what, what can we be accountable for? Um, you know, t helping me kind of organize that, come out, and let me know what things that you're interested in, what things that, that you'd like to help with. That's going to be a great start. So, you know, in summary, what our goal is, making Erlanger top of mind when people are looking to relocate or thinking about expansion. This is only going to be achieved if we're all moving in the same direction. And um, I appreciate your attention, guys. Thank you for your input. Thank you. Thank you. Could you email this to us so we can study it before the next meeting? Yeah, actually, and um, thank you. I do actually have a paper copy for you, too. <clears throat> All right, with that, are there any other items that we want to review this evening? I like to say one thing. So everybody has their ID now. Uh, just let you know about access to the building. Okay. Idea about what? Huh? I'm sorry. You didn't get one? No, I said idea about what? Huh. <laughs> your ID just got your picture on. It's a city of Erlanger. Da, da. <laughs> anyway, all right. So those IDs get you in the front door. They get you in the back doors back here by the back parking lot. And they will get you into the hallway coming up here and to the Wickman room in this building. If, in fact, you have access to your department buildings, whoever you have, that's up to the chiefs and whether or not they've granted you that access and or the directors and ask them to see if, in fact, you've got access to inside their building. Nobody has access inside administration. You can come into the Wickman room. Your mailboxes are in there. If you need anybody in administration, come to the front, call us, do whatever. Um, but in, before the council meetings on the Tuesday nights, the door between the Wickman room and administration will be open, okay, at least two or three hours before uh, the meeting starts. So if you need to get in there, feel free to come in anytime you want. Again, feel free to call us, come see us whenever you'd like to see us. Uh, but get with your departments to see if, in fact, you've got, because they've got access and control of their own buildings. So to see if whether or not you got that. But I wanted, everybody's got them now. So hopefully we're good. All right, thank you. Any other items for discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion that we adjourn. Motion by Mr. Blankenship, second by Mr. Burke. Um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned.